So let's first look at the WPA process. So this is WPA, not WPA2, okay? And WPA uses that four-way process just like WPA1 does, okay? Uh, WPA2 does. Now, one thing about WPA, I must make sure you understand that. If you are using this older version of WPA, I recommend you use very long passwords. Here's why. This has been known to be very, very susceptible to dictionary attacks and other forms of attacks that are out there. The longer your password, the longer it'll take for them to break it. But be very, very careful. Anyone who's used Kali Linux or any of those other uh, uh, penetration testing software will let you know that it, it, it isn't that hard to break WPA if people are using short passwords. Longer passwords, the better, okay? So let's take a look at this process. First off, I'm gonna, I'm gonna crunch down the EAT process that you should know already. So we're gonna say, we got an EAT success, right? We already have that done, great, finished. And we get the what, the PMK. Does anyone remember what the PMK stand for, stands for? I'll give you a hint, it starts with pairwise master key. Right, And this pairwise master key is given to the what? Supplicant. And the supplicant or client has this pairwise master key. The access point derives the pairwise master key given all the information that's been bouncing back and forth. And now we have a type of secured conversation that can take place here. But WPA doesn't stop there. It's, it, it, it adds to this process. First off, what it's going to do is, instead of, in the regular process, at the end of this process, the keys were handed out, right? We had the pairwise master key, and then we could pass back and forth key that gives us the encryption. But WPA takes it a step further. What I'm going to do is, the access point authenticator is going to give an A naught. What, what is a naught? It's just a random number. And it's going to give a little bit of information. Okay, random numbers sent across. This is received by what? The supplicant or client. The su supplicant or client goes, oh, okay, I have this information. I'm going to pair this with my S naught, supplicator naught, or supplicator random number. So I'm creating a random number as well. I got a random number. I'm creating a random number. When I do that, I'm going to create the PTK. Does anyone remember what the PTK is? The PTK, the pair of y, uh, The pairwise transient key. That's what it is. The PTK, the pairwise transient key. Now, I have a copy of that. Because I have the S nonce and I have the A nonce, the two random numbers, I put them together to create the PTK. Now I'm going to change, I'm going to send across my random number, my S nonce, and I'm going to send it with a message integrity check or mic. So I'm sending across a message integrity check with that random number. Now what? Now the authenticator has both random numbers. It has the A nonce plus the S nonce, authenticator plus supplicant, random numbers. And because it has those things, it can generate the PTK, pairwise transit key. Now, this key that we are generating is completely just for this session. If I leave, I'm going to have to create a new one. Ah, are we done yet? Well, we have a pairwise transit transient key for communication back and forth between the client itself and the access point. That's great. But I also need a group transient key. Yeah, I need a key for multicast and broadcast, don't I? And we're not using a shared key that everybody's going to keep going forever and ever. We're using a group transient key, meaning anybody leaves the group or anything like that, this GTK can change. So what do I have to do? Well, the authenticator has to now send across that group transient key with a mic message integrity check 
so that everybody can make sure they're receiving the right information. That's sent across over to the client. The client receives this or the supplicant receives this. And now we have what? A pairwise transient key and a group transient key. I can receive unicast and broadcast traffic encrypted. So this is on top of the EAP process already. So we're sending keys back and forth that contains keys in them. Very, very, very secure. Last but not least, I have to send what is basically an acknowledgement. I have to say, okay, I received what you had. Let's use these keys. Now, at any point, if this client leaves this cell with this access point in it and moves to another one, this process has to complete again. The A knots, the S knots, the mic, the group transient key, all of it has to change. Not necessarily the E process. Because the E process is all about keys for authentication to the radius server. If we've done that already and we are within the same wireless LAN controller, just in a different cell or access point, we would just change the second part, the WPA part.